So this is um, an adult patient uh, who presented with headaches and uh, this is the lateral projection from a digital subtraction angiogram uh, with selective internal carotid artery injection and it is showing multifocal regions of stenosis and di mild dilatation involving the anterior cerebral artery branch vessels. However, the visualized portions of the middle cerebral artery branch vessels are appearing normal. So, uh, considering the finding of uh, the key imaging finding of multifocal regions of vascular stenosis, uh, the top differential will be a reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome, uh, which is uh, in this case secondary to the vasoactive drug use. And uh, however, you can add vasculitis in the differential along with vasospasm and uh, atherosclerosis. So, another case. Uh, of a 40 year old man presenting with headaches. So this is a lateral DSA of an internal carotid artery injection again however here it is during the late arterial phase and it shows a large hypervascular mass in the occipital region which is supplied by the enlarged arterial feeders and uh, there is early venous drainage as well along the inferior aspect of the mass uh, which is uh, consistent with arteriovenous shunting. So considering this key imaging finding of uh, hypervascular cerebral mass or abnormality on DSA, so obviously this, uh, the, the top differential will be arteriovenous malformation. However, you can add hypervascular tumor or uh, aneurysm or moya moya disease as well in the differential. So this is a case of arteriovenous malformation. So this is uh, a 62 year old man who has uh, a six year history of uh, decline cognitive decline so these are the attenuation corrected attenuation corrected axial fdg pet images of uh, the brain and they are showing that there is decreased activity within the bilateral parietal and uh, temporal lobes with the intact normal activity uh, within the bilateral frontal and occipital lobes the attenuation corrected uh, FDG PET uh, maximum intensity projection image in the sagittal uh, view shows decreased activity in both the parietal and temporal lobes with intact normal activity within the cerebellum and the frontal and the occipital lobes. So considering this key finding of decreased FDG activity in the setting of dementia, decreased cortical FDG activity, 18 FDG activity in the setting of dementia, the top differential here is Alzheimer's disease. Other than that, you can add multi infarct dementia, Pick's disease, or Parkinson's disease in the differentials. So, this is a patient who is 13 year old girl presenting with worsening uh, headaches. And uh, this is, these are uh, serial MRI scans. These are the axial T2 weighted MRI scans. And this one involves the sagittal view as well. So here you can see that there is moderate to marked enlargement of the lateral and third ventricles uh, with a normal sized fourth ventricle. So here in this image you can see that the fourth ventricle is of normal size. In the uh, uh, high resolution sagittal T2 Fiesta image, uh, this is showing that there is a, the sagittal T2 Fiesta image is showing that there is re uh, focal narrowing of the inferior cerebral aqueduct with a small web there is a small web here and uh, there is focal narrowing of the inferior cerebral aqueduct and uh, the proximal aqueduct is dilated so considering this uh, key finding of the narrowing of the cerebral aqueduct with the lateral and third ventricular megaly so the uh, diagnosis here is of aqueductal stenosis so this is a case of uh, aqueductal stenosis so next is 44 year old man presenting with progressive dementia this is the axial ct scan and it shows prominent uh, symmetric volume loss involving the chordate heads with compensatory enlargement of the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles the intercordate distance is significantly enlarged so uh, as you can see that uh, this in this case the key finding is that there is preferential chordate volume loss in an adult patient so the diagnosis is huntington's disease huntington disease is the diagnosis here 
these are images of a young adult man presenting with acute onset of headache however there is no history of trauma here so this is uh, on the unenhanced axial ct scan there is uh, a subarachnoid hemorrhage within the sylvian fissure on the right side uh, however in on the three dimensional volume rendered reformatted image from a ct angiogram there is a secular a right middle cerebral artery aneurysm at the m1 m2 junction uh, which is pointing inferiorly uh, with an m2 branch uh, originating from its base so considering this key imaging finding of subarachnoid hemorrhage with adjacent aneurysm uh, so the diagnosis here is of ruptured aneurysm so the subarachnoid hemorrhage is because of the aneurysm that has been ruptured uh, case of a young boy with an incidental finding on uh, workup for headaches. So, this is the axial T2 MRI sequence which is showing an anomalous artery uh, which is originating uh, from the posterior cavernous segment of the right internal carotid artery and it is extending posteriorly to the mid basilar artery. So, uh, this is a case of uh, anomalous carotid vertebro basilar anastomosis and uh, the uh, the um, uh, so this is actually the persistent fetal carotid vertebro basilar anastomosis that is persistent trigeminal artery so this is a case of persistent trigeminal artery next we have 16 year old boy presenting with chronic headaches and uh, these are the images provided also you can see that this is the post contrast sequence so now we can see that on the axial D2 weighted uh, MRI there is a circumscribed uh, right posterior thalamic lesion uh, with increased signal centrally and a rim of uh, prominent decreased signal intensity. So there is a peripheral rim of uh, hypointensity within a central rim uh, central lesion of hyperintensity. The alternating signal intensity results in a characteristic popcorn appearance. However, there is no mass effect or edema. The T1 weighted MRI shows uh, similar but much less pronounced signal characteristics uh, with central increased and peripheral decreased signal intensity. This is uh, the axial uh, T1 post contrast sequence and it is showing that there is mild enhancement uh, within this lesion as well as uh, portions of the adjacent uh, developmental venous anomaly as well are enhancing. So, the portions of an adjacent developmental venous anomaly are also noted here along with this lesion which is enhancing. So, cons considering this key finding of a sub circumscribed uh, lesion with central increased and peripheral decreased signal giving a characteristic popcorn appearance. So, the typical imaging picture uh, this is the typical imaging picture of cavernous malformation that is cavernoma. So, this should be the only differential here that this is a case of cavernoma that is cavernous malformation. So, this is, these are the images of a 44 year old woman who has presented with headaches and seizures. So, this is the uh, axial CT scan and uh, next is the axial T2 MRI sequence. Here uh, you can see that uh, there is the uh, post contrast sequence provided along with the, this uh, digital subtraction angiogram image of the left internal carotid artery. So as you can see that on the CT scan there is a hyperdense mass with calcifications and mild surrounding edema within the posterior uh, left frontal lobe. A ventricular drainage catheter is partially visualized uh, within the right frontal lobe. On the axial T2 weighted MRI sequence, you can see that there is a nidus of enlarged serpentine flow voids with a large venous aneurysm uh, laterally. And there is prominent, uh, so these are uh, these uh, serpentine flow voids with a large venous aneurysm laterally. And on the post contrast sequence, you can see that there is prominent enhancement and uh, flow related artifact on this uh, axial T1 post contrast image. On the lateral oblique digital subtraction angiogram of the left internal carotid artery, you can see that there is early venous filling during the arterial phase, uh, including the large venous aneurysm, as well as there are enlarged vessels feeding, uh, draining, and within the nidus. The serpentine uh, subtraction artifact corresponds to the partial embolization. 
So the key finding here is that there is a parenchymal mass with a vascular nidus and enlarged feeding and draining vessels. So this is a very typical picture of arteriovenous malformation and this is a diagnosed case of arteriovenous malformation. So this is an adult patient presenting with orbital pain, visual loss and bruy. These are the coned down axial T2 weighted MRI fat suppressed image and the uh, other image is the MR angiogram. So in the cone down axial T2 fat suppressed uh, MRI we can see that there is the convex lateral border and increased flow voids uh, within the left cavernous sinus uh, mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. Also, there is enlargement and uh, edema involving the left uh, extraocular muscles, uh, inflammation of the intraorbital and periorbital fat, and proptosis as well. This three dimensional volume rendered uh, reformation from the MR angiogram is showing that there is increased signal or uh, flow within the left cavernous sinus and the left superior ophthalmic vein as well. So the key imaging finding is here is of enlarged cavernous sinus with early venous filling on arterial phase imaging. So the diagnosis here is of carotid cavernous fistula. So this is a case of carotid cavernous fistula. Next is a 77 year old man presenting with transit ischemic attacks and vertigo. These are the three dimensional volume rendered uh, magnetic uh, resonance and geography reformations and uh, they are showing that there are two separate lumens at the vertebrobasilar junction and uh, the lumens converge proximally and distally. S there is slight loss of uh, flow signal intensity uh, at the origin of the fenestration on the right which uh, corresponds to a region of focal arterial stenosis. So the key finding here is of separate arterial lumens that are converging proximally and distally. So this is a case of uh, arterial fenestration. This is a diagnosed case of arterial fenestration. So this is a young adult man who has presented with postcoital headache and however there is no recent trauma history. The DSA was normal initially and uh, two weeks following the initial presentation these are the images. This is the CT scan axial slice. And this is the uh, sagittal slice of the CT scan. So, as you can see, uh, that uh, on this uh, axial unenhanced CT scan, uh, there is a subarachnoid hemorrhage which is centered within the perimesencephalic cisterns. And on the sagittal reformatted image, you can see that the hemorrhage there is hemorrhage within the prepontine, uh, premedullary, and perimesencephalic uh, cisterns. So, considering this uh, key finding of non-traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage which is centered within the prepontine and perimesencephalic cisterns, so the, the, the diagnosis here is of non-aneurysmal perimesencephalic hemorrhage. So, this is a case of non-aneurysmal perimesencephalic hemorrhage. Okay, so the patient is 51 year old woman presenting with left retroauricular headache and uh, these are the images provided. So as you can see that on the axial T2 MRI there are uh, there are increased flow voids extending along the tentorium on the left side extending to the distal transverse sinus. The axial uh, T1 uh, post contrast MRI uh, reveals corresponding vascular enhancement here and uh, these are the lateral images from uh, the digital subtraction angiogram with selective injection of the uh, left internal and uh, external carotid arteries which are showing the early filling of the transverse and sigmoid sinuses during the arterial phase imaging. Additional imaging revealed the primary arterial vascular supply from the meningohypophyseal trunk, the middle meningeal, ascending pharyngeal and uh, occipital arteries. So this is a dural based uh, arteriovenous shunt and uh, the diagnosis here is of dural arteriovenous fistula. This is an 8 year old girl who has presented with headaches and uh, these are the images. 
so as you can see that uh, on the axial and coronal uh, post contrast uh, these uh, this this is the axial and coronal post contrast uh, sequences with fat suppression and they show that there are branching regions of enhancement within the right frontal lobe with a common trunk that drains into an enlarged deep ependymal vein uh, giving the characteristic caput medusa sign so this is the lesion giving the characteristic caput medusa sign which is a very typical uh, imaging finding in a case of developmental venous anomaly so this is a diagnosed case of developmental venous anomaly as you can see that there are branching regions of enhancement extending into a dilated venous trunk giving the caput medusa sign these are images of a 74 year old woman presenting with memory loss uh, as you can see that uh, this is axial d2 and axial flare uh, sequence and these are the uh, post contrast sequences this is the the left one is the the right one is the post contrast sequence so as you can see that uh, the axial t2 and flare sequences show a very subtle uh, region of increased signal intensity within the central pons uh, which is slightly uh, eccentric to the right there is no appreciable uh, signal abnormality on the pre contrast t1 uh, weighted sequence however the here on the fat suppressed uh, post contrast sequence you can see that there is an ill defined enhancement in the region of this subtle t2 signal abnormality so considering this key imaging finding of a faint region of brain stem signal abnormality with ill defined enhancement uh, this is uh, the typical imaging finding of uh, this is called brush like enhancement and it is a case of capillary telangiectasia that is uh, in capillary telangiectasia you see this brush like enhancement uh, which is uh, centered within the brain stem so there is a faint region of brain stem signal abnormality with ill defined enhancement and this is a case of capillary telangiectasia so this is uh, a case of a young boy presenting with headache and hearing loss ataxia this is the axial t2 star gray sequence and there is a decreased signal intensity along the surface of the brain stem and cerebellum as well as along the ependymal uh, surface of the fourth ventricle so the key imaging finding here is of decreased gray signal along the surface of the brain and brain stem so this is uh, a case of superficial sidrosis this is a 16 year old boy presenting with chronic headaches and uh, these are the images on the axial t2 weighted mri there is uh, occlusion of the left and severe stenosis of the right carotid terminus uh, with multiple small basal collateral flow voids on the axial T1 post contrast MRI, we can see that there is enhancement of the deep perforating uh, basal collateral vessels as well as enhancement of the uh, leptomeningeal collateral vessels along the cerebral convexities. This is the maximum um, intensity projection image from the MR angiogram and it shows the terminal occlusion of the intracranial carotid arteries and uh, proximal M1 segments with multiple small collateral vessels um, uh, giving a characteristic uh, smudgy or the puff of smoke appearance on the left also there is filling of the distal MCA uh, vasculature secondary to the cortico, uh, cortical anastomosis so considering the key finding of the carotid terminus occlusion with numerous uh, basal collateral vessels the diagnosis here is of moya moya disease so this is the typical puff of smoke appearance of the moya moya disease this is a six months old female infant brought to the emergency room by her mother having lost conscious after rolling off the bed so as you can see that this is the non-contrast head CT scan and it shows the acute extra axial hemorrhages within the interhemispheric fissure and the that is interhemispheric fissure or the parafalcine region and right posterior convexity as well as well as the subacute to chronic bilateral frontoparietal uh, subdural hematomas 
So uh, this, uh, the key imaging finding here is of the subdural hemorrhages of varying ages and uh, the diagnosis is non-accidental trauma. Case of a 19 year old woman presenting with persistent and worsening headaches. Uh, these are the axial sequential CT scans and uh, the unenhanced uh, CT scan images here. So they are showing uh, that there is hyperattenuation involving the superior sagittal sinus, the cortical veins along the cranial vertex and uh, the transverse sinuses. Now these are the um, T2, uh, coronal 2D uh, TOF MR image and uh, it is showing that there is ISO to hypo intense filling defects within the superior sagittal and uh, bilateral transverse sinuses. There is minimal hyper intense flow, minimal hyper intense flow can also be seen along the periphery of the filling defects and uh, the corresponding coronal T1 post contrast Im uh, image here shows the empty delta sign with the enhancement around the non-enhancing filling defects within the superior sagittal and transverse sinuses. So the key finding here is of the hyperdense dural venous sinuses on CT and loss of flow signal on MRV and filling defects uh, post contrast. So this is uh, the diagnosed case of venous sinus thrombosis. This is a case of venous sinus thrombosis because venous sinus thrombosis is hyperdense on unenhanced CT and the empty delta sign is noted on the enhanced CT venogram. This is a two day old boy presenting with congestive heart failure and uh, these are the ultrasound images and uh, these are the MR sequences. T2 weighted MR sequences. So as you can see that uh, there is a large uh, tubular hypoechoic mass on the ultrasound with pronounced vascularity on Doppler. On the axial and sagittal T2 MRI images we can see that there is a large vascular malformation uh, in the region of the vein of Galen as well as numerous additional enlarged cerebral vessels, the malformation drains into the superior uh, sagittal sinus via a persistent falcine sinus. There is ventricular megaly with parenchymal volume loss. The sagittal image shows enlargement of the cervical cord and uh, volume loss within the brain stem. So considering uh, the key finding here of a large vascular malformation which is draining from the tactile region to the superior sagittal sinus in a neonate patient, the diagnosis here is of vein of gallon malformation. This is a young adult woman who is presenting uh, with uh, progressive headaches and uh, these are the axial T2 weighted MRI sequences and they show that there is uh, normal to slightly small ventricles. There are normal to slightly small ventricles with normal brain parenchyma. The axial T2 MRI through the orbits shows the enlargement of the optic nerve sheath complexes uh, with flattening and reverse cupping, reverse cupping at the optic nerve insertions onto the globes. The sagittal T1 weighted MRI shows increased uh, cerebrospinal fluid in the cella with the flattening of the pituitary gland uh, inferiorly. Increased uh, T1 signal uh, in the sphenoid sinus corresponds to the mucus retention cyst. This maximum intensity projection image here from the MR venogram uh, shows the narrowing of the distal uh, left transverse sinus. So the key finding here is of small ventricles, partially empty cella, reverse cupping of the globes and venous sinus stenosis. So this is a case of uh, pseudotumor cerebri which is also known as intracranial hypertension uh, which typically occurs in overweight women of uh, childbearing age. So this is a case of pseudotumor cerebri. These are the images of a 57 year old male uh, who is unresponsive after the motor vehicle accident. So this is the actually these are the technetium uh, HM POW uh, brain death study images and uh, the selected images from dynamic flow uh, one second per frame for one minute shows the absence of intracranial flow 
the blood pool imaging in the anterior and lateral projections uh, reveals the absent cerebral or cerebellar uptake and physiological very faint scalp activity along with increased activity in the nasal region which is called the hot nose sign so these findings were confirmed on the delayed single photon emission uh, computed tomography imaging of the head uh, which is not included here so this is uh, actually uh, the key finding here is of absent intracranial activity on technetium hexa methyl propylene amine oxime scan that is hm pow scan and this is a diagnosed case of brain death this hot nose sign is a very typical feature of brain death so next is a 42 year old man presenting with left facial and contralateral body sensory loss left sided ptosis hoarseness and vertigo these are the images as you can see dot on, that on the axial flare sequence and uh, here as well uh, you can see that there is a uh, increased signal intensity within the posterior lateral medulla on the left and uh, on this uh, ct angiography image uh, you can see this is the three dimensional volume rendered image from the ct angiography and it shows that there is absence of the left pica which is a portion uh, a portion of the proximal right pica is visualized here on the contralateral side however there is absence of left pica uh, although visualization of pica on ct angio angiogram is variable this uh, occlusion was confirmed on the conventional angiogram as well so the key finding here is of uh, abnormal increased flare signal along the posterior lateral medulla along with the absence of pica uh, on the in geography image so this is a case of lateral medullary syndrome or wallenberg syndrome which uh, classically results from the occlusion of the posterior inferior cerebellar artery that is pica with associated infarction of the posterior lateral medulla so this is uh, a young girl who has uh, presented with known congenital brain malformation these are the images uh, the source and three dimensional volume rendered and mr angiography images through the circle of willis show a solitary vertical a2 segment of the aca and uh, there is absence of the anterior communicating artery that is a com and there is a solitary vertical a2 segment of the aca here so the key finding here is of solitary vertical a2 segment of the anterior cerebral artery and this is a, a diagnosed case of azygous anterior cerebral artery so this is a case of azygous anterior cerebral artery uh, case of a young man presenting with chronic headaches and uh, these are the images now as you can see that on the axial ct scan there is a well circumscribed CSF density mass in the left choroidal fissure. On the axial T2 weighted MRI sequence, you can see that uh, at a sequential level, at the same level, it reveals the similar findings with the lesion in the choroidal fissure, and this lesion is following the CSF signal, CSF signal intensity. So, considering the key imaging finding here of a CSF cyst within the choroidal fissure. So obviously the diagnosis will here will be choroidal fissure cyst. So this is a case of choroidal fissure cyst, which is a type of neuroepithelial or neuroglial or, or arachnoid cyst, which basically occurs within the choroidal fissure. These are images of a four-year-old girl presenting with headaches. On the axial T2 weighted MRI, there is diffuse enlargement of the choroid plexus within the lateral ventricles as well as the uh, lateral ventricular enlargement. On the axial uh, post contrast MRI, we can see that there is avid symmetric uh, enlargement, there is avid symmetric enhancement and enlargement of the choroid plexus. Uh, however, there is no focal mass here. Okay, so on, on the axial post contrast sequence, we can see that there is avid symmetric enlargement and enhancement of the choroid plexus without a focal mass and uh, uh, both the lateral and third ventricles are enlarged on the coronal image okay so this is the coronal sequence post contrast and it shows that there is uh, 
uh, enlargement of both the lateral and third ventricles also on the coronal sequence as well you can see that there is avid symmetric enlargement and enhancement of the choroid plexus so the key finding here is of diffuse symmetric choroid plexus enlargement without a focal mass and uh, this forms the diagnosis of the villus hyperplasia of the choroid plexus which is a very rare congenital abnormality which is characterized by diffuse symmetric enlargement of the choroid plexus so these are images of a 12 year old boy presenting with altered mental status and a history of uh, KRE2 malformation with ventriculoperitoneal shunting so on the unenhanced axial CT scan uh, you can see that there is significant ventricular enlargement compared with the uh, baseline examination that is these are the prior examination uh, images so these are the baseline examination images and as you can see that compared to these images there is a significant ventricular enlargement uh, in the current scan here in the current scan there is a significant ventricular enlargement uh, right posterior approach ventricular drainage catheter is also uh, noted and uh, on the frontal radiograph of the skull and neck from a shunt series it shows the discontinuity of the vp shunt within the soft tissues of the neck on the right side so the key finding here is of the interval dilatation of the ventricles and clinical decline in a patient with a vp shunt so the, the diagnosis here is of shunt catheter malfunction uh, so the shunt catheter malfunction is the diagnosis here uh, because uh, the hydrocephalus would have may have resulted the hydrocephalus is because of the obstruction or production or the reduced resorption of csf and here the vp shunting has failed to reduce the hydrocephalus so that is why there is a significant enlargement of the ventricles compared to the prior exam because of the uh, shunt catheter malfunction these are images of a 19 year old woman who has presented uh, with headaches and uh, on the axial T2 weighted MRI there is a well circumscribed ovoid hyper intense lesion uh, within the distal left transverse sinus at the venous entry site. The majority of the lesion is uh, following the CSF signal intensity on the flare signal on the flare sequence as well uh, with signal loss. However, on uh, the offline midline sagittal D1 weighted MRI, you can see that uh, uh, through the, this uh, distal left transverse sinus, you can see that there is a hypo intense signal intensity uh, similar to that of CSF within this lesion. So, the key finding here is of a well circumscribed T1 hypo intense. Here, T1 hypo intense and T2 hyper intense lesion within a dural sinus. So this is a case of arachnoid granulation. So arachnoid granulations are basically protuberances, uh, protuberances of the leptomeninges that extend into the lumen of the dural venous sinuses, uh, particularly sagittal transverse and sig sigmoid sinuses. They are actually normal uh, incidental structures, uh, but they could be mistaken for any dural sinus pathology like thrombus on cross-sectional imaging studies. So this is a normal uh, finding of uh, arachnoid granulation.